Welcome back to Starscape Reborn, everyone. As the series moves towards its natural endpoint, we're working on a few of our final objectives. As things stand right now, we have three objectives left. We need to achieve martial rank within the Cavani military, we need to visit our last historical monument within the system of Taste Day, and our third objective is to visit each of the gate systems and leave a tag of a player we killed. Today we are going to make the greatest journey possible in Starscape, a trip of over 360 star systems. So, a few personal restrictions I had for this journey. Firstly, we're going to make the trip in one go, without using wormholes and without returning to secure space even once. And secondly, I'm going to explore each system and specifically mine the red Norcor I found. Cherry picking, if you will. In its entirety, this journey was taken across 24 days, with a few systems of progress being made each day, usually before or after I went to work. And since I wasn't returning to secure space even once, all of the player tags I had with me were at risk if I got jumped while traveling. So sit back and enjoy the greatest journey in Starscape. We begin our journey in Alpha Essalt, a system above the Lysentian border, in a speed mako I designed earlier. Although I quickly switched to a Honey Badger, which I greatly prefer as a cherry picking ship due to its greater mining speed. Only a few jumps in, we find our first frontier outpost. Throughout this journey, I will be buying most of the tier 2 upgrades that FOs and freighters sell. These modules and turrets are very cheap in these shops and usually sell for 4 or 5 times the price at the Citadel market. Despite Wild Space usually being a dangerous place, most of my interactions on this journey took some form of friendly conversation followed by peacefully parting ways. Starscape can be funny like that sometimes. After achieving the first stage of our journey safely, we arrive at G-01, or Gate System 1. While the gate systems serve no direct gameplay function that we are aware of yet, these systems still unsettle me to this day. There's just something off about such a monumental structure being shrouded in darkness and mystery. Perhaps one day, perhaps one day we'll learn more about these ancient titans. One gate system down, eight more to go. A good while later, I was logging back on to return to my travels, when upon loading in, I noticed another player. No issue, right? I can just fly away and warp off. Well, much to my surprise, as well as this player's, I exited warp directly into an AFK conciliator, probably scaring him more than he scared me. No, I'm in wild space. Oh, you're on your other account. I logged in. You're not going to believe this. I log in, right? Ooh, sorry, I got to got to calm down here for a second. I log in and I'm in, you know, Radagast or whatever. So, you know, pretty far out. Got 43 yeah. jumps to, to GO2, right? Uh, just chilling. Someone's I noticed there's there. someone in my system, right? I'm like, oh, there's someone in my system. Like, oh, well, you know, I'm probably fine. I'll just do a warp when I land. Uh, and uh, I land, right? I don't just land, though. I bump 
physically into a conciliator that's parked at the war point. Oh, I physically bump into it and I'm in a honey badge. He does not even realize I'm there for a second and I panic because I'm like, if I try to plan a warp, he's going to kill me. Like, yeah, I, I bumped into the conciliator and I panicked and flew away and he started firing me at me just as I left his weapons range. <laughs> that would have sucked because I have all my player tags I need to leave oh. at the systems. So I have eight did player tags on me. You, did you leave one already? Yeah, I left one at Geo1 already. So I technically you've already completed Geo1. Yes. But I have eight player tags on me and uh, 236 red Narcor, so. Without further event, we finally reached the second gate system, G-02. Here we are. There's the neutron star. Can't travel to these planets, which is very interesting. They just show up as unknown. There's one of the planets. Ah, uh, see that cloud? It's a little hard to see, but it's kind of whole cloud right here. I'm betting you the gate's in here somewhere. There we go. It's our player tag for this gate system. Got a long flight to get to our next one. It was at this point in the trip when I realized I hadn't updated my recording software settings since wiping my computer, leading to a pretty big loss in quality. From this point on, the footage should be crystal clear. We have finally arrived at gate four. Been a couple days actually in wild space. It's getting lonely out here. The 
first thing we want to do. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you warp in the gate system is search for that cloud. Because the gate's going to be in this cloud. I know it's a little hard to see, but you can make it out. It's actually pretty creepy. We got the star above us. There is the planet. And it might be behind the cloud as well. I think it is. Regardless, we've got this cloud here, and we know there's a gate somewhere inside. We're now a little under halfway done with our journey. It's been quite an interesting one. I think uh, I've scanned 134 systems. I've only found 12 Narcor asteroids, which is pretty funny. Come on, I know you're in here somewhere. I really do wish Starscape had more eerie, you know, eerie environments like this because exploring the gate systems and just not being able to see the system very well, having it dark, knowing that there's something ancient in here. It gives me a feeling that I, I adore from space games and, and a feeling I have gotten from games like Elite Dangerous. And I feel like it's just really missing from the rest of the game, which can be taken with a level of playfulness that, you know, a lot of Roblox games can be. Come on, where are you? Oh, that's terrifying. Just see that out of the corner of my eye. What a spectacular structure. All right, as is our method here, we are gonna leave a tag and I think it's Mayonator's turn. Mayonator shall forever rest with gate four. All right, it's time to move on. We still have many gates left to visit. finally have the rest of our gate systems mapped in. We still have to traverse about half of the entire galaxy. I believe we started around here. We've made the journey across, across the northeast sector of the galaxy. We're headed down to these regions down here. So the Alteran Reach, Terminus, Arcana, Eternity, and finally Wildar ending our journey in Delta Anka, which pretty much everyone in the community is very familiar with this system. The gate system hidden here has probably had as many deaths, player deaths, as a lot of the PvP systems in the game. We're making progress. So, there are a few things to note here. Firstly, I've changed up the rules for my mission. Before, I was recording the types of anomalies at each system, and I'm going to stop that, partly because it's just monstrously tedious. Secondly, Kess has pushed a few patches, uh, including a patch for the auto mining bots, which should mean that now we're going to run into a lot more red narcor than we were before. Uh, and thirdly, I've also decided that starting now, here in Kitfator, I'm going to be exploring every ring aberration, specifically to search for red Narcor. Now, there's a reason for that, because people tend to miss the ring aberrations, or at least skip over them. And this right here, this anomaly, is why you don't do that. So, I was flying around in this in this ring aberration, thinking to myself, wow, must have been mined out by somebody. But no, if you look around, you can't see any mineable asteroids, but you have to look closer. Narcor ring aberrations are really sneaky, because when you're searching for them, it'll look like the ring aberration is just mined out and that there's one asteroid hiding somewhere. But in reality, they're going to be hiding stuff like this. So this is actually the first ring I scanned since I changed my, my rules for the trip. And I found this 
immediately. This is the first aberration I've warped to. So that's exactly why you should change up how you do your mining if you don't scan these aberrations. Check that out. So we actually had an AN anomaly <laughs> right here. I've already mined out all of the red narcor, and we just found another one in the same system right here. This was definitely the right call. So in the course of scanning this one system, we went from 389 red narcor when we entered this system to 499. That is like, that is almost a 100 increase in our red narcor, which is insane. I'll be having that. Clutch. goodies might you have in store for us? That's too cool. Hey, I'll take the warp chargers, but maybe the rapid bolt. That's about it from here, I think. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I've found a single red narco rock, or at least very few, in any AT anomalies since I began this run. So that's a that's a welcome sight. You know, I think I'll take that too.
So there's a reason I've been actually buying up all these modules as I've been exploring. And the reason for that is the modules are insanely cheap at these, these stations. So like, you know, this one's 750. Actually, I think they all are. For example, like this is 750, right? So that's 3000 credits for four of them. Now, let me check the market real quick for that item. It's 7,000 credits for a parallel circuit right now on the player market. Meaning I've just turned that 700 credits into 7,000, which is actually really good. And, you know, obviously these pistols are, are the best in the game at the moment, so those sell really well. Basically, this is just trading, you know, a paltry handful of credits, basically, for items that take resources. And it is it is really a good deal to buy stuff from these. I don't want the Swift Bolt. I know those don't sell too well. I could take the Rhino. It sells for like 4,500, but it takes up too much of our inventory to really carry it with us. Point being, we're spending almost no credits in return for, I don't know, 10 timesing our, our investment in those modules that we can just sell when we get back. Uh, even if we scrapped them, it would probably be worth it. That's my reasoning behind that, and that's why I've been buying up everything at the FOs. It's actually a really easy way to get some really good modules that take no crafting resources to make. Like 12 parallel circuits, that, you know, that is crazy. Yeah, these 12 parallel circuits, that's that's 87,000 credits right there. Just based off of the current player market prices. And those can go up and down in pretty short order. I would recommend if you're doing any long, long journeys that you buy up the modules when you see them at the FOs. They're almost free with the pricing. And it, it's just a really good deal. You can flip them on the player market for almost nothing. You can even undercut and earn less, but you're you're still gonna, you know, increase your credit investment by a lot.
Finally, after an unreasonably long journey, we arrive at our destination, Gate 9. Unlike Gates 1 through 8, Gate 9 stands completely apart in several aspects. The first thing you'll notice is the distinct difference in atmosphere, the shattered molten crust of the planet in the background, and the dark clouds surrounding Gate 9 which flickers with energy and lightning, the only other examples of which are the dangerous VX anomalies that can rarely be found throughout the galaxy. After flying through the nebula, you are greeted with one of the most awe-inspiring and terrifying sights in Starscape, a scene of complete and utter destruction. The gate itself lies shattered in multiple fragments surrounded by chunks of shattered debris, and the hulking wrecks of strange capital ships, the designs of which are completely unknown to the Starscape galaxy. Each of these three hulking wrecks bears a nameplate with the following title. Blue Space, Singularity, and the Blade of Perseus. The Blade of Perseus itself lies crumpled within the wrecked part of the gate structure, giving the suggestion that it seemingly rammed the gate itself, although nothing else is known about why the ship would take such a drastic action. The bridge of the Blade of Perseus is exposed to space, allowing players to see inside, where the bodies of multiple mysterious crew members float wearing an armor that no one recognizes. Gate 9 holds within it many secrets. It implies both amazing and terrifying things for the Starscape galaxy. One day, we may know what happened here, and we may wish that we did not. With the placing of this final player tag, we complete one of our largest challenges, and bring the series one step closer being completed. And with that, we are one step closer to finishing this series, and one step closer to starting the next one. I will see you guys in the next episode. Fly safe out there, pilots.